Okay, this week we're talking about Walt Whitman. Uh, I've got a few videos talking mostly about Song of Myself. Um, so we'll get started with those. I'll chop them up into different parts for you. Um, personally, I'm always fascinated by the first stanza of Whitman's Song of Myself. As you read the rest of the poem, it's clear that Whitman's creating a new kind of poetry. Its lines are longer, the beats are irregular, and there's no rhyme. The form of Whitman's poems, as you can probably tell, works very differently than those of Bradstreet, Wheatley, and Longfellow. And yet, as we read the first three lines of the stanza, I, of the first stanza, I celebrate myself and what I assume you shall assume for every atom belonging to me as good belongs to you, you can tell that there is a distinct rhyme. In the second line, we have you sounds in assume, you, and assume again. These are examples of what we call internal rhyme. That's rhyme that occurs within a line. At the end of the third line, we have an end rhyme, which echoes the internal rhyme of the second line. The ending word you from line three rhymes with the ending word assume from line two. I can't help but think that Whitman uses rhyme here deliberately. He obviously knows he's creating a new kind of poetry. He states that much in his preface. So I wonder if he isn't in some way luring readers in from this old school poetry by maintaining that sing-song equality and what I assume you shall assume for every atom belonging to me as good belongs to you and the internal and end rhyme. Once he's invited the readers of old school poetry into his poem, he shifts direction and becomes more Whitman-esque. Lines four and five do not rhyme with each other or with the previously or with the previous three lines. I loaf and invite my soul. I lean and loaf at my ease, observing a spear of summer grass. <laughs>